we just got back from Israel and I've been, we have been traveling to Israel for many years since I went the first time when I was a boy, my parents took us. And so we have many friends there, many Israelis who are friends, some believers in Jesus, some who are not. But we find they are all very respectful of the church and what we do. And when we visit, we want to learn about Israel and they want to learn about the States. And so we always spend time asking questions and answering some questions. And there was an awkwardness to that this time, partially because of the anxiety in Israel and to a more significant degree because of what's happening in our nation. And I get, you know, we're outside of the news cycle and when you're there, you're busy and I'm not really listening to what's going on here. And you come back, it's a bit shocking. You know, when you're away for a few days, you can kind of forget and not think about it. But I, I want to continue to encourage you, as I have been for many months now, to keep watching. Listen. Pay attention. Think about what you're watching and listening to. You need to believe what's being said. It's not a joke. It's bizarre, but it's not a joke. In fact, the best description I know is that we are witnesses to the theater of the absurd. They have opened their doors and they are playing to record crowds, but it doesn't make it any less absurd. Some of the latest offerings when I came back, I just collected these. This was like the news I missed while I was gone. The comedy of equity and inclusion, can, and inclusion continues to gain momentum. And, and perhaps most distressing to me in that is just the brazen, bold, unapologetic public opposition to expressions of the Christian faith. There seems to be an unrelenting determination that the Christian faith has to be a private thing. It has to be sequestered in your home or privately. It shouldn't be expressed in the public place in any way. The most public example I saw was shocking to me. Deion Sanders. Do you know him? He's a generational athlete. Played football at Florida State University. All sorts of national recognition and awards. And he went on to play in the National Football League for the Atlanta Falcons, the Dallas Cowboys. Just a... Uh, with tremendous physical gifts. Play, play, he, played, he played both professional football and professional baseball. So he had some gifts. And he had the personality to go with it to help him capitalize on it. If you know him, you know that's true. Prime time. Well, he's, he's had enough birthdays. He's no longer playing professional sports. But he began coaching. And not long ago, he went to coach Jackson State, a school that had not had tremendous national notoriety to their football program. And his presence brought a great deal of attention, put a lot of pressure on him. He coached there beginning in 2020 through 2022. They went to consecutive bowl games. They had their first undefeated season in their history. And not surprisingly, if you have that kind of success, a larger school comes with invitations and better contracts. So Dion left Jackson State to go to the University of Colorado. And his critics said, he, he said when he went to Jackson State that God had sent him there. So they mocked him when he left. They said, if God sent you there, why are you leaving? I read what he said. He didn't say God told him to stay there forever. <laughs> but they, they seldom miss an opportunity to mock your faith if you dare to interject it into your public life. And now that he's in Colorado, he's in trouble. There's a group that has very forcefully objected to the fact that he brought his faith into the coaching profession. He was actually playing with his, praying with his players. And the great fear that's been expressed is that the players on his team felt coerced to pray. Bless their hearts. He's told he has to stop offering coercive prayers at practice with his players. Now, just to put this in a context so that you don't miss what's happening, we can subject minor children to gender transformation lectures without parental consent. But college football players, these 300 pound people that can bench press your home, <laughs> should not be subjected to prayers. The, the, the intent to diminish the expressions of the Christian faith. They told us it wasn't welcome in corporate boardrooms until corporations decided to embrace a worldview that stands in opposition to the biblical faith and then it becomes the law. They hire departments of equity and inclusion and they'll include everything except the Christian faith. Are you watching? 
There is a tremendous difference between the freedom of religion and freedom from religion. And what our Constitution promises us is freedom of religion. No state church, but no state involvement in the church. It's the First Amendment, if you're not familiar with it. But the theater of the absurd doesn't stop there. I would invite you into the, 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 the second screening room to follow the science theater. That's really become interesting of late. There's a breakthrough. Have you heard it? Truth in the public square. It's awkward. It's causing people some anxiety. They're trying to figure out how to amend their reports that happen to have been videotaped. But apparently, breakthrough here, folks. The COVID origins may have actually been a lab leak from Wuhan, China. <laughs> Spoiler alert. And then for months and months and months, we covered that up, we denied it, we looked the other way. There are some implications to that if you're watching and you're thinking. We all understand the principle that you can't yell fire in a crowded theater, but China lit the fire. And then when someone said they smelled smoke, the Chinese government disagreed, said, we don't smell anything. And they failed to help. From this vantage point, I think what we have to acknowledge is COVID has been used as a vehicle for the enormous intrusion of the government into our healthcare systems. And forget the details around COVID. It was an unknown virus. There was a lot of learning going on. I don't want to necessarily revisit that, but I do want to revisit this. It's not good when the government is between a doctor and a patient. That's bad. The outcomes are diminished for both parties. We both suffer in that. The quality of care declines and the incentive for better medicine is removed from the hands of those who were trained to provide the care. It's just a bad equation. I assure you, we don't want the government dictating how to treat patients, which patients to treat, which patients will not receive treatment or what treatment is acceptable. Now some, if you're alert, will observe and rightly so that it's already happened. And I would acknowledge that. But I would say to you, we shouldn't accept it. We have to take it back. It's wrong. There's one more screen I would point out in the theater of the absurd, and then we'll get on with this. But the drama department is doubling down on the latest dramatic tragedy. Are you ready for this one? I'm glad you're seated because it's stunning. The government is encouraging drug use. Not personal opinion, not theory, easily substantiated. Our government is using its power and force and authority in many, many ways, I'm going to give you a slight sample, to encourage drug use. The legalization of or the refusal to enforce laws regarding marijuana are escalating nationwide, state after state, city after city. We've arrived at a point where we have 300 deaths per day as a result of drug overdoses. 300 a day. Let me put that in a context. That means in a 10-day in a window, this room would be filled to overflowing with people who will die of drug overdoses. That's a stunning number. The majority of those overdoses are the result of fentanyl. If you're not paying attention, China is the primary producer of fentanyl, and it is pouring across our southern border. So while the government refuses to enforce our laws regarding immigration, they are welcoming into our nation a poison that is killing hundreds of us a day. Drug overdoses are the number one cause of death for people between 18 and 45. Just suppose, what if we decided to track and report overdose deaths like we did COVID-19? The theater of the absurd is open. I hope you're paying attention. I don't want you to be frightened. I don't want you to be totally immersed in it, but you need to pay attention. You need to pay more attention to the theater of the kingdom of God. Amen. Because I assure you that as much as darkness is moving in the earth, as much as there are expressions of evil, God is moving in greater and more powerful ways. Amen. I'll give you one example of that. I'll give you a little bit of a personal example. It's, we were in Israel last week and the last day we were there in the city of Jerusalem, we stopped at the pools of Bethesda. It's a wonderful little site. It's kind of a calm place 
out of the busyness of the streets of the old city of Jerusalem. There's a beautiful crusader church there. But the pools of Bethesda, remember the biblical story? Jesus went there and healed a man who was lame and he couldn't get into the water when the water was stirred. And Jesus healed him. He didn't heal everybody at the pools, but he healed that one man. Well, not surprisingly, it's, it's become a historic site for Christians making pilgrimages to Jerusalem. So since the late 300s, there's been a church at the pools of Bethesda. The late 300s, that's a long time ago. There've been multiple churches there, so the site is a little confusing, but the actual pools are still there. Well, we'd, we'd finished, the guides had finished their part of the story, and we'd been sh we were shooting some little videos to share with you. So we climbed down all the steps to get to the one where one of the pools were. We wanted to try to shoot something out of the hustle and bustle of the crowd. And we found a little space and there wasn't anybody there. And I don't even honestly remember if we did the video, but we were, we were ready to go because the group was leaving. And I didn't know there was anybody else in the area with us. And a woman tapped me on the shoulder. Then I turned around and she didn't introduce herself. She just said, excuse me, would you happen to know anything about the baptism in the Holy Spirit? And I said, well, I know a little. <laughs> and she said, well, I don't know anything about it. But she said, when I came to Israel, I asked the Lord to let me receive that before I left the land. And my plane is leaving this afternoon. Could you help me? Now she didn't know me from Adam's house cat. Now the, my group was leaving. And so I said, well, I got about two minutes. I give you the short course. So we gave her an overview and we prayed with her and we prayed and she prayed. And there were tears running down her face. And I said, have a safe trip home. And I had to smile as I finished that day in the city that God would care enough about a woman who offered a prayer to him in the privacy of her heart to arrange a random appointment with somebody that could answer the question she was holding. If God would do that for her, I believe we can trust him to watch over our lives. Amen. Amen. So don't give your attention to the knuckleheads and the darkness. You need to pay attention so you're not caught off guard and you can use your voice to speak the truth. Don't just capitulate. Not everybody will love you. If that young man can stand on Diesengoff Street in Tel Aviv and talk about Jesus, surely we can stand in the schools in our neighborhoods and the places where we work in our hospital corridors and stand up for what we believe. Amen. Amen. Hey, this is Pastor Allen. Thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, like it, and most importantly, share it with your friends. If you want to be notified when there's new content, when we post new material, if you'll just subscribe to my channel and hit the bell, you'll get the notification. Most of all, I pray God blesses you as you continue on your spiritual journey and open your heart to the Lord. God bless.